Welcome to today's Bible study from College Lutheran Church and from me, Pastor David Drebus. It's good for us to study God's Word. We continue to do that using this list of the top 100 essential Bible passages. We come today to passage number 43, Justice for the Poor, from the book of the prophet Amos, chapter 5. Now, Amos writes from about the year 750 BC or so, and it happens to be a very prosperous time for the people of Israel in the northern kingdom. Amos is from the southern kingdom, Judah. And I think in chapter 5, he gets at something uh, that's very much in our culture today. Um, you know, there have been uh, tragedies in our society. There have been times that horrible things have happened, and uh, it's become uh, kind of a refrain among some political figures to offer thoughts and prayers, but no action to address uh, whatever the given uh, tragedy may be. And so that's almost become a mocking thing where others have started to mock the idea of saying thoughts and prayers, thoughts and prayers, uh, whenever something bad happens to someone. Um, Amos is getting at something very much like that in chapter 5, starting at verse 21, when he's speaking for the Lord, saying, I spurn with loathing your pilgrim feasts. I take no pleasure in your sacred ceremonies. Uh, this is very serious business, serious judgment words uh, from God, saying, don't worship me, basically. Now, why would, uh, why would God be saying these things to the people of Israel? Well, I think to get at that question, we need to actually skip ahead to chapter 8. Uh, it's much clearer here um, in terms of what the problem is. If you look at chapter 8, starting at verse 4, um, again, this is Amos uh, sort of speaking on the Lord's behalf. Listen to this, you that grind the poor and suppress the humble in the land, while you say, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain? When will the Sabbath be passed so we may expose our wheat for sale, giving short measure in bushel and taking overweight in the silver, tilting the scales fraudulently and selling the refuse of the wheat that we may buy the weak for silver and the poor for a poor for a pair of sandals? Um, this time of prosperity has actually been deadly for the spiritual health of the people of Israel. That's the concern in the writings of the prophet Amos. And um, what, uh, what I find so striking about this, it gets at a couple of um, uh, problems that are perennial problems. You can almost imagine Amos here is upset that people are checking their watches, waiting for church to be over so that they can go back to making as much money as possible. Or, um, He's also calling out, I think, each and every one of us who wear clothes that are manufactured around the world. Uh, the state of our world today and our global market, I can't account for uh, the labor of everyone who, who put together the shoes I'm wearing. And Amos, here in chapter 8, uh, verse 6, is talking about um, exploiting the poor for a pair of sandals. So I've always felt this passage speaks very uh, directly to me. And I think it's helpful for us to depart from chapter 5 for just a moment to review exactly what the problem is for Amos. Now, if we go back to chapter 5, and especially towards the end, starting in verse 21, what I had just read from before, uh, again, it's, a, it's striking, but might make a little bit more sense now, that God spurns with loathing our pilgrim feasts and takes no pleasure in our sacred ceremonies. Uh, I think what this is getting at here is the problem of ceremonial worship that is not matched by true action to help others, or true worship of God, which includes caring for our neighbor, loving our neighbor as ourselves. So, the problem with thoughts and prayers, or with empty ceremonies, is when that is the end of the response to something that's happened, rather than the beginning Rituals are not the resolution of the problems of our world. Uh, the way I think about it is, you know, on Sunday we practice forgiveness in the liturgy of our church, or uh, we study God, what God wants us to do, and that's meant to be the beginning of the week for us. So we practice forgiveness here in our Christian community so that we can be more forgiving 
uh, Sunday afternoon through Saturday night. And by Sunday morning, we need another reminder of what it means to be forgiven by God and how that means I should forgive my neighbor. Or we need to hear again the words of our Lord to take care of those in need around us. And that's not the end of that conversation. It's just the beginning. And so um, I think that's the right way to both lift up the importance of our, um, our religious ceremonies. Amos is not saying don't gather for worship, but he is saying don't gather for worship and think that's the end. I think that's an important word for all of us to hear. Amos is known as one of the harshest prophets in the entire Bible. And so in chapter 5 again, uh, our reading for today, uh, in verse 18, he says, Do not wait for the day of the Lord with hope. Um, I, it will be like someone who runs from a lion only to be confronted by a bear. That's a real warning for all of us uh, that we may not be um, so happy when the Lord returns. If, uh, if it means judgment on us for the ways that we have uh, fallen short of what he's called us to do. Uh, so we should repent and we should return to what God wants us to do for our neighbor. There is not much comfort in the writing of the prophet Amos, but if we skip all the way to the end, there is the enduring promise of, of the Lord, our God, starting in verse 14 of chapter 9. I shall restore the fortunes of my people Israel. They will rebuild their devastated cities and live in them, plant vineyards and drink the wine, cultivate gardens and eat the fruit. Once more I shall plant them on their own soil. Never again will they be uprooted from the soil I have given them. It is the word of the Lord your God. Now, we don't get to a promise like that without the necessary healing, and sometimes healing requires a harsh word. And that is the function of the words shared by the prophet Amos. It's meant to be a wake-up call. I hope you and I hear this wake-up call so that we can receive the healing that God offers us and so that we will thrive as God's people. That's my prayer for us, and I believe that's uh, the message Amos uh, would share with us today, although he would use much harsher language than I have. Peace be with you.